Ван Фуд Флипа. Hi, Paige here, the One Foot Flipper. Uh, got a lot of stuff to talk about today, so let's just get right into it. It's summertime, it's garage sale season, but not for me. I'm actually still trying to shrink my store. I want to get less items and get my all my business onto one level of my home, which is the basement. So while all you will be out there at the garage sales getting a bunch of stuff, I'm not going to be at all. I'm going to be trying to get everything out of that I've got in stock out of here so I can reconfigure my business to better fit my lifestyle. In fact, the only sourcing this summer I am planning on doing right now is this weekend, the Let's Do Lunch podcast. Uh, that's uh, Rural Squirrel and Angie Resells is having an event in my town, St. Louis. I actually live in St. Charles, but it's right next to St. Louis. And we're going to have a lunch and go to the Goodwill bin. So I'm going to go to that, not expecting to get anything, being that there's going to be, it's going to be on a Saturday, which is the busiest time at the bins. And there's going to be a dozen resellers there that I, you know, just for the event alone, plus everybody that normally be there. And all of those people have at least one more leg than me. Some of them might have more than that. So let's see if I get anything there. Uh, let's talk about a couple of sales before we get into the topic. I sold a lot of I'm going to throw these miniatures up on the screen later. Sold a lot of two thief rogue assassins in black robes. Miniatures painted $14.99. And this warrior band of three dwarven brothers with skull logos for $17.99. Now, when you're selling these fantasy and science fiction miniatures, how you're going to want to title these is going to be based on whether they're for a war game or for role-playing games. If they're for a war game, that miniature has an exact title and you're gonna to wanna to figure out the exact name of that. However, if it's just a generic fantasy miniature that people might use for any game or generic science fiction, particularly if it's painted, you do not actually do not want to find the exact name of that miniature unless it's ridiculously old. If it's from the 80s or the 70s, yeah, find the exact name. But if it's late 90s or newer modern era, you don't want to find the exact name because then you're actually competing on that against everybody else with the exact same item. So on these miniatures, I gave them cool descriptive names of exactly what they were without trying to figure out what model they were. And they have been selling very fast that way, as opposed to figuring out the exact model and, oh, look, somebody else has one for $2. No, I'd much rather get the $14.99 or the $17.99. And a lot of times I'll group these painted miniatures up. If, if they're not outstanding, I'll group them into groups of two or three similar miniatures rather than just one by itself. All right. Today's topic is that whatnot and cross-posting is not going to fix your eBay woes or your bad business practices at all. It, sure, it's other avenues, other places to sell, but if your practices aren't good in the first place, going to other platforms with less eyes are not going to fix that. In fact, we're going to talk about, we're going to make somebody up here, we're going to call him YouTube Bob. YouTube Bob is not any individual reseller that I follow or that exists. YouTube Bob is an amalgamation of everybody out there who's got somewhere between my level of followers, 4,000, and Harry Tornado with his half million or whatever else. And YouTube Bob, he's got a lot of people that follow him, and his reselling experience and the advice that he gives is heavily influenced by the fact that he has a following and that he might be being paid to give certain types types of advice and he's no longer having a genuine eBay experience 
which is pretty important and we can get into later. But not having a genuine eBay experience can also cause them to possibly have success at strategies that should not or work or do not work for normal people. And while I'm just at the bottom of that following level, I don't really get reset uh, user sales at all. I getting like one a month. That's basically that's a drop in the ocean. I think it's I don't know if it's because I'm more business focused or because I mostly have all this weird gaming stuff and don't have lots of cool plush. I'm not sure. But either way, I have not been affected by YouTube fame, at least as far as my my business goes. I sold seven pieces of G-Scale train track at $6 per piece across two transactions. I've got a quantity listing on these. These are actually doing so well that I'm thinking about possibly ripping open to part out some of the really big G-Scale train sets that I have because if I can get over 100 bucks for the track out of the set, then I'm sure I could sell the cars off and that'll be better than actually selling the entire sets. And what else did I sell? The Who, live at Leeds, vinyl, $8.09. No, and my title says C video because I make videos on all of my records, even the ones that aren't worth doing. Now, all my records have come from big buys. None of them are me cherry picking good records out of a public area. It's just me buying them all. So I oftentimes end up with worse records than anybody who would cherry pick them. But I just process them anyway, particularly because I'm taking my photos and my video of the records in a location that's nowhere near my computer. I'm not looking them up first. And if after I'm done with the, you know, two minutes that was involved in the photo and video and I find out the record's only worth three bucks, oh well, I put it up for the three bucks anyway. Now had I been picking those records in general, I wouldn't have picked them. But once they're mine, I'm going to want to get the money off of them. Now, we're also going to talk about another seller in here, as opposed to YouTube Bob. We're going to talk about average seller. The average seller watch, watches YouTube Bob and all of YouTube's Bob, Bob's friends, but they don't have a social media following. They don't have people specifically coming to their stores to buy their items. And their sales are down. They're, they're selling less than they've sold before, and they don't know why. And... Honestly, it can be a lot of reasons why. Uh, although, usually the biggest reason is actually price. Regardless of anything else, it's either bad items in the first place or price. Let's see, I sold a record album, Jesus Christ Superstar. 359. This is one I would not have picked if I was, you know buying my records one at a time not worth it especially because it's a double album which means that it's going to go over one pound in the media mail and cost an extra 60 cents to ship and my media mail is at a flat rate so i'm gonna make 60 cents less on that than i normally even would which pushes it down to three bucks <clears throat> i sold this yoda backpack 24 inch jedi disney parks he does have a bad zipper. The zipper keeps wanting to come off the track, so I sold him for $18.99. He's normally about a $30 item. Now, talk about cross-posting. Cross-posting can increase your sales. Uh, it definitely can. You're going to be putting your items in front of more eyes. But here's the thing. If you have bad prices and bad business practices, that's just putting your bad practices and your bad prices in front of a few more people. Eb of, you know, just selling everything, eBay is the number one. And the number two, I'm not sure what it is, but that number two is such a tiny, tiny percentage of the market. All of these places you can cross post are a tiny percentage of the market compared to eBay. It's nothing i mean ebay's we're not talking about amazon but take amazon out of the equation ebay's 90 percent of the market and everybody else is chomping up that other 10 percent and now youtube bob 
he's being paid to promote cross listings, probably. Or if he's not, he's just talking about them because everybody else in the space is talking about them. But here's the thing, you watch YouTube Bob's videos and it seems like he's only getting one cross listing sale per episode. I don't know how many items YouTube Bob sells per day, but I list and sell about 20 per day. And I don't do an episode every day. Neither does YouTube Bob. So he's going to get one cross post sale and 40 sales. That's only a 2% increase in your sales. That's not a game changer in any way, particularly once you're actually paying for those cross listing services. Once that free trial runs out, you know, let's see what else we got. Tempest X3 for the PS1, disc only, 539. I do not like disc only games. I just got a got a return request on one. And, you know, it's not disc looks fine, but it's not like I'm going to pay money to get that disc back when the disc itself only sold for 3 bucks plus shipping in the first place. I'm not paying 5 bucks to get it back. So, of course, I just have to refund the buyer. I just don't like video games as a category disc based and it just keeps getting worse. I sold a softball bat. Combat Madison Shipman multi wall 44.99. Baseball bats have done softball bats in particular have done incredible for me. Like that one right there sold for more money than I have paid for every softball bat I've ever bought combined. And that's just one bat. So I buy a, if I can buy the bat for one or two dollars, unless it looks like complete trash, I buy it every time. And all, the vast majority of them seem to be sellable. Plain old wood bats that aren't fancy don't seem to be sellable, but just about everything else does. Talk about whatnot. Whatnot, hey, it can be a great place to sell. It can be a great place to sell your items and a great place to move some serious volume. But the thing is, Whatnot's going to work better for YouTube Bob than it's going to work for you. YouTube Bob already has a following. He has people who are going to be excited about his first Whatnot, and they're going to go to it, and they're going to buy his items. <laughs> you, however, you don't have that following, you average reseller. You're going to go there and have to build up from nothingness. Just striving and trying to gain a new functional business when you probably already know how to use eBay. You already probably have a functional business there that it might just have a few flaws. You're going from having the biggest marketplace in the world to trying to sell things to those three people in your stream. And it could be months or a year or more before you even get out of that three people in your stream mode. Is that really the solution to your problems? I don't know. I don't think it would be the solution to my problems. Where did it go? My lovely. Okay. I sold a Mizuno baseball glove and I don't know where it is. Uh, I sold it for $13.49. I pulled it. It's around here somewhere. Got lost in the shuffle. I'll find I'll find it before I have to ship it, which is right after this video. I sold model train part, aristocrat remote switch machine, part slot. This was in the bottom of a bag of a bunch of sealed switch machines. This one was opened up and some of the wires were disconnected, so I sold it for cheaper, and it sold before any of the sealed ones did. $8.09. Now, another thing about Whatnot is, ultimately, you're putting your time and energy into selling items that are of low value. Because you're not going to put those high-value items on Whatnot because you don't want to give them away. You're going to put those on eBay anyway. So you're going, basically, you're going to go into a lot of trouble to sell low value items for less money than they would bring on eBay. Now, if that's gonna be your business model, great. Go for it, go, go all in on it, make it work for you. But I don't know if that's the best business model in the world. It's not the sort of business model that I wanna have at all. I. Uh, 
Sold this bag of jumbo foam polyhedral dice, $9.99. Got that in a bulk buy of various gaming items a while back. Just didn't get around to listing it. Sold another baseball glove, McGregor. Quite used, $9.84. Seems like most old gloves seem to be worth $10. Some are worth much more, but just generic McGregor still seem to sell for like $10. I think some people would rather just get one that's already broken in pay 10 for it and pay 25 at the store for a new one still not have it be good for six months now your whatnot sales are also going to go poorly if you're not a specialist or you don't have a following youtube bob he has a following me i'm a specialist at least in some some things i could go in there and sell nothing but gaming miniatures or nothing but magic cards and I could attract, you know, a client base that is looking for that sort of item. But if you're an everything seller and you're trying to sell on whatnot, you know, you're trying to sell this used iPhone. Oh, by the way, I got my lanyard for it so I can actually wear it around my neck and stop listing it. You know, you've got six people in your stream, you're trying to sell them a used iPhone, then a PlayStation disc, then a barcode scanner. Then an old bottle of Gooby gone. And is anyone, any of those six people, or even 60 people in your stream, going to be interested in that random item? Probably not. All right, what else did I sell? So this Dungeons and Dragons Ice, Pirates, Ice Spire Peak Adventure Preview, $4.49. I have massive quantity of these. I bought out the local game store I used to work at before I lost the leg. They dropped D&D as a line because they just, it wasn't selling very well for them. It didn't sell in store at all. These I think were supposed to be free or free with any purchase. And their D&D stuff was all gone, but they still had these. They had massive quantity of them. I got them in a big purchase of things. And so while well, I only get four, 49 each for them. I sell one every once in a while. And they're easy, they're pretty easy to pack and to ship, so it's worth it. I also sold this wargaming book for Flames of War, Villers Bogage. Bocage. That's why it sold so cheap. I spelled it wrong. And it got marked down four times because I spelled it wrong. Sold for four dollars and four cents. Don't spell things wrong in your titles. Now, if you really want to fix your eBay woes, first thing you need to look at is how are your prices on items that are easily searched? Go to your store, you know, go, go look at your feedback and then click or look at one of your listings and hit, you know, view items, view, view sellers other items. Scroll down to the first thing that has a definite name and search that name. Then search price lowest first. Price oh price plus shipping lowest first. They took away price lowest first. Uh, where is yours? Are you in the top three? Do you even show up on the page at all? <clears throat> if you don't, then your price is probably way too high and your item's never going to sell. And then you have to ask yourself if... You've got bad prices on items that are easily searched, items that you can easily research the prices on, then how bad must your prices be on items that you can't easily search a price on? It's probably not going to be better. If you're guessing prices on one, you're going to be guessing prices on the other. And that's something you should not be doing, is guessing prices. I see YouTube Bob doing this all the time. Sometimes I'll look at YouTube Bob's store and it's obvious that he guesses prices on everything. And you know, there's more than one YouTube Bob, so some YouTube Bobs don't do that. And you'll hear them, they talk about comps a lot. But then you've got YouTube Bob over here and he never talks about comps at all. Just says things like, oh, I put it up there for this or figured I'd try for this. And he doesn't look at comps, he's just guessing. And that YouTube Bob is probably thinking about going to whatnot instead of just fixing what's really wrong with his store, which is the prices. Gonna maybe instead go to whatnot and sell those items for less. 
I hope it works out for him. I really do. Because another thing, if you are YouTube Bob, switching over to whatnot when you have a channel based upon your eBay sales, you are going to seriously hurt hurt your channel and your following. Not as many people are going to care about watching videos based on your whatnot sales. I know ADH Dave, he has his what, separate whatnot channel, but that only has followers because he has multiple other channels that feed into into that channel that feed followers into that channel if he if that channel was just that wouldn't work nobody cares nobody people are not heavily interested in watching videos about selling things on whatnot i sold this sledding snowman christmas ornament with the name annie on it for 6.59 i have massive quantities of christmas ornaments with names on them or that you can put names on uh they're in the one foot flipper store uh check them out uh they combine shipping at no extra charge i believe they combine shipping at no extra charge or it might be an extra 50 cents i don't remember at the moment but plenty of them out there some of which nobody else has the grudge of drong warhammer fantasy campaign pack nice condition no buildings 32.99 somebody bought this 30 years ago they made the little cardboard fold-up buildings and didn't touch the rest of the box set. That's extremely common. Because I used to do the same thing when I was a kid. If there's a cardboard fold-up castle in that D&D set, I would make that cardboard fold-up castle absolutely every time. And eventually that thing would end up destroyed or in the trash. And then the rest of the box set would be there in perfect condition. And same thing here. Now, more modern adult players are only going to care about those cardboard buildings if they're if they are specifically collecting if they just want to use the item you know your 40 year old warhammer player he's probably got an incredible setup of much better terrain and more solid buildings and notches pieces of cardboard and this probably went to somebody like that now on ebay if you're having poor sales are you promoting your clothing and your hard to compare items? Because that is where promoted listings really comes into its own. I don't promote things that are easy to search because there's no reason for it because people are gonna search those items price lowest first. But I promote my, sh my clothing and any hard to compare items because otherwise you're not gonna get any eyes on them unless you've got a following or you're an extreme specialist at which point your listings will just feed into each other. All right, I sold this DC Heroes role-playing adventure, King of Crime. Only sold for $3.50 despite being pretty much in near mint condition. I think it's because DC Heroes is probably like fourth down the list of superhero role-playing games. It's just not very good. People prefer, prefer the champion system, uh, Marvel superheroes. And there's another one based on the modern D&D &D rules that are all more popular than DC Heroes. So there's just that anything super common for that game is going to be cheap. It's only the rare items for that game that are going to actually be money. Where did it go? Pretend you can see it. I'm not even going to pop it up on the screen. I sold a single Warhammer Rogue Trader Eldar Scorpion figure for $8. I have quantity on that since that is a wargaming miniature i'd be sure i was sure and give it gave it the exact name that it has now finally talking about your ebay strategy are you basing your ebay strategy on tricks fake sales coupon codes relist delist things like that instead of just having a good price in the first place if you are then why not just try having a good price in the first place? Actually, try having the best price in the first place and see how that works out for you. It's worked out pretty good for me. All right, I've gone on for a long time now, so uh, hey, thanks for watching and hope to see you again soon. Hit that like and subscribe. Tell your friends. Bye-bye.